Welcome back to Bumblebee. Let's have a great week. You know what? I feel it. It's in the air. We're both gonna have a great week. You and I. And also Chris. All three of us are gonna have a great week. Here are the top 10 darkest ocean discoveries we never should have found. Immediately back into the negative. Here we go. Number 10, Roman sea curses. Okay, the first century. A great place to begin with most things that are horrible and new to humans. Romans did things a little differently. We can't figure out yet how they engineered aqueducts or how that many people watch Colosseum battles. Yeah, I can't watch an arm bar during UFC, let alone bring my family to the Colosseum. Be like, that's a lion. That's a, that's a guy getting eaten by the lion. Yeah, it's him. Ancient Roman naturalist, Pliny the Elder, he wrote a book on natural history. And in said book, this go-to, might I add, on ancient history, the Elder wrote about half-human, half-fish creatures that he called Nereids. Hmm, that sounds like uh, mermaids, avatar, I don't even know, Atlanteans? He even added to his first observation detailing that the human parts of said body were covered in rough scales. Human in appearance, but still fishy nonetheless. Awesome. Guess we have those to look forward to? The Elder also recalls a seaman who would climb ships at night and then sink them. Kind of like Aquaman, only he wouldn't help people. He would actually put them in life-threatening situations. But still cool, he probably looked like a bad climb on that ship, you know? Number nine, sirens, AKA mermaids. Here we go, figured I'd talk about these ones as well. The mythology surrounding sirens, it's interesting, but I don't know how I feel about it yet. We have to talk about it in the comments. I don't think we have Atlanteans flirting with sailors per se, but I do believe there's some sort of creature that's hybrid human fish, you know what I mean? On his first trip overseas in 1493, Christopher Columbus claims to have seen not one, but three sirens. Yeah, he even wrote about it. He said they rose well out of the sea, but they are not so beautiful as they are said to be. Okay, he's rhyming, that's always fun. Thank you, Columbus. For their faces had some masculine traits. That's what he added afterwards. I would think I'd be a very cute mermaid. Honestly, thank you so much. I could probably trick Christopher Columbus and be like, hey, come to this island. Just wave in and do my little fish thing, whatever. So what did Christopher Columbus see? I mean, when it comes to correctly identifying places and or people, obviously Chris can get confused. He's not really our go-to guy, I don't think anymore. So historians believe Columbus may have seen a few manatees and not mermaids. Either way. I'm you know what? Both are kind of terrifying to see out of nowhere. Number eight, the Kraken. For ages now, sailors from Norway and Greenland have shared tales of this giant sea monster, and you've probably heard about it as well. Or if you've seen the hit franchise, Pirates of the Caribbean, you've probably seen it in IMAX. Tentacles big enough to pluck you out of your boat. This thing is terrifying, right? We all know about the Kraken. In 1857, Danish naturalist Jephita Strinstrup found a large squid beak, and soon after was sent parts of another specimen from the Bahamas, okay? So something was out there. He concludes that the Kraken is real and that this was proof, and that these parts were maybe part of a species of giant squid called Architeuthis ducks, which translates to ruling squid in Latin. Very little is known about giant ruling squid, of course, because they're so hard to track, but we did get a photo of one in 2005 and a video of another in 2013. Number seven, Yellow Brick Road. Deep sea divers may have found the road to Atlantis, or Oz, one of the two. Back in May 2022, this bizarre path was spotted in the Pacific after an exploration vessel, Nautilus, caught the rocky formation near Hawaii. Just a nice place of unknown everything in that ocean. Awesome, we love exploring. The exploration team said in a recent interview with Wyon News that our corps of exploration have witnessed incredibly unique and fascinating geological formations while diving on the Lili Ukulani Ridge. The 90 degree fractures are most likely the results from, you know, a big eruption from a volcano along a long time ago. The Marine National Monument, or PNMM for short, is the largest fully protected conservation area in the world. So let's, let's not litter anymore, maybe, I don't know. It covers more than 580,000 square miles in the ocean. So far we've only discovered 3% of its seafloor. So I'm sure there's many more discoveries of roads, apparently leading to Atlantis. Let's hope. Number six, the Great Lakes Griffin. Back in 2018 in Lake Michigan, Diver Steve Leibert found what he believed was the holy grail of Great Lakes shipwrecks. Now, this is exciting to some. I can't even look at photos. I have thalassophobia. The Griffin sank back in 1679. Divers have been searching for this beauty for a very long time. As a kid, Steve himself, Steve Leibert, was talking about the shipwreck when his history teacher stopped and said, hey, who knows? Maybe one of you will find the Griffin. Imagine that your grade eight teacher tells you somebody will find a ship one day and that somebody was actually you. 
Yeah, at 76 years old, Steve discovered the wreck. It was 2018, but his research began 40 years ago. Liber began diving back in 1981 after an amazing teacher got him motivated. It took a long time to track down, of course, but I think it was worth it, we can all agree. If you're in any Great Lakes, keep your eyes open for, you know, 50 foot long sh ships from the 1600s. They're always lurking below. That's why I can't swim. Like I put goggles on, look down, and see the top of a ship. I would throw up, I would literally, that's it. Maybe because I'm like afraid of heights and for some reason when I'm in like the ocean or like a lake, I feel like I'm up high. Maybe that's what it is. Number five, toxic waste. Okay, we mentioned a yellow brick road. It's always fun, it's a fun time, a creepy looking discovery, but certainly not harmful like this next one here. Yeah, for the back nine, we're gonna crank it up a bit. Sometimes we find literal barrels of waste. This dump site here was discovered off the coast of LA. It's 3,000 feet deep and these ROVs, these deep ROVs found around 27,000 barrels of waste. Looks like the climax of a Breaking Bad finale. It's just, what is going on down here? What happened? Who put these here? The 2021 discovery was deemed staggering. Yeah, that's one of many words I can say on YouTube, for sure. You can literally see in these photos like this aura of toxic waste, like just a, a plume of evil coming from these barrels. That's brutal. Recycle, please. Number four, the frilled shark. Also alarming, just in its own natural, terrifying way. Back in 2004, marine biologists discovered a dinosaur. Yeah, they discovered the frilled shark. It was lurking around 870 meters below the surface. Now this one looks like an eel, almost. It's so scary, I don't know. Frilled sharks can grow up to seven feet long, and they fight like daredevil. They can hunt in complete darkness. They don't have to look, they just use their senses, and they don't use sunlight. I almost got lost there while I was doing that bit, but if I was a frilled shark, I'd be dead on still, I'd be fine. They don't need to see anything, so remember that next time you're skinny dipping. Unless you can hold your breath for a long time, you won't actually run into the frilled shark, so don't worry about that. They're only found a mile below the surface, and again, they're rare as hell. Have you ever dealt one of these? Are you a diver? Have you seen a shark? Comment down below some of your diving nightmares, just so I can read them, and then go, oh, I'm never going in the ocean ever again. That's what I like doing. I like going, oh, I'm never doing that ever again. That's what Reddit's for. Number three. The deepest shipwreck. The USS Johnston was a US Navy destroyer which sank during the Battle of Samar back in 1944. It was after a battle with a large fleet of Japanese warships and it went down. Now Victor Vescavo, who is one of the few people who has made the dive into the Marianas Trench, that's why his name sounds familiar, he was one of the people who first stumbled upon the remains of this sunken warship. The ship's remains were first found in 2019 and was known as the deepest known shipwreck as it was found 6,456 meters deep in the Philippine Sea in the Pacific Ocean. I lost track of what I was saying. That's, it's so deep, I can't even imagine. That's like a mountain, you know what I'm saying? We have a new record holder, believe it or not. Yeah, the world's deepest shipwreck was discovered four miles underwater in the Philippines. Yep, yeah, this is now the world's deepest shipwreck that was ever discovered. This is terrifying. Uh, I wanna move on right now, I'm gonna throw up. Number two, loud ocean heat. This is just naturally and so scary, here we go. How depressing is this one? Okay, back in 1991, scientists lowered these massive speakers, like nightclub subwoofers, almost, into the waters at Heard Island. Also, like Heard Island speakers, is this a bit? I wish I was making this up. They made the pun for me. They did my job, I'm upset. These speakers emitted low frequency sounds all across our oceans. Now these signals were later picked up by receivers near California and Bermuda. And these signals contain information on the temperature of our oceans. Our oceans absorb more than 90% of energy left from global warming. Doesn't help when we lower 27,000 barrels of into it. So let's just maybe stop that for a bit. There were a few scientists who at the time were also concerned about how these low frequency sounds may be affecting our ocean life. Yeah, what does that sound like to a beluga whale? And finally, number one, the Vasa shipwreck. Back in 1628, the Vasa sunk within 20 minutes of setting sail. This is a tragedy. This claimed the lives of 30 souls on board. How tragic is this? Now, the Swedish Navy launched the ship August 10th, 1628. It was once considered a high-tech warship, even referred to as spectacular. So what the hell happened? Well, the first rush of wind caught it off guard, started making a little topsy-turny, and the second gush of wind sank it. Just like that, there was no war, there was nothing going on, just a bottle of clink, and then it went down. 
so fast. It's like the scene in Shrek where it sinks fast comedically, but this was real life, so it wasn't comedic at all. It was actually rather terrifying. There was a crowd around and everything to send it off, but the 64 bronze cannons that were installed during the rushed process of building the warship, they were deemed too heavy, evidently. The lack of oxygen in the water allowed for its rediscovery to continue its story. That's how we know how she went down. The Vasa was built with carvings all around the king at the time, King Gustav II. So when the wreck was discovered in 1961, 95% of the wood was still intact. It's deep, dark, and cold. Yeah, nothing really, uh, nothing affects it. Humans focusing too much on naval warfare, rather on if the ship can actually stay afloat. That's a definitely a human problem. I can't tell if this is a curse or just humans being humans, but yeah, stop installing 64 bronze cannons. Those are the top 10 darkest ocean discoveries we never should have found. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters. Keep being you, and we'll see you next time on Bumblebee. Peace.